in Ghana, whether it be in Sudan, whether it be in Palestine, whether it be in Ukraine. I have to truly trust that God is in control. Prayer is the most important tool that we have. And quite often we don't use it. Quite often we pray for things and when things don't manifest when we want them to, we have a tendency to walk away from them, making our prayers null and void. I ask that you trust God. If you're praying for someone in your family and they haven't come around like when you thought they should come around, that doesn't mean that God did not hear you, your prayer. But realize God does not work in your time. He does not work in my time. But in his own time. Because if you truly look at yourself, number one, you don't have it all right today. And there were things that you went through, be it in your youth, whatever case that you didn't do everything right. And there was somebody praying for you and they were probably thinking the same thing. You could have been in church all your life. But if you're at home, whether you're young, I told a young man this, do realize that you're not by yourself. The enemy wants you to think that you're on an island completely by yourself. And if he can make you feel like you're separated, he can defeat you because you're not, you don't, you're not relying on someone else with that support. Know that you're not alone. There are people that see you. You may spend time crying, thinking, God, do you see me? Yes, he does see you. You may spend time thinking, God, have you heard me? Yes, he has heard you. And completely understand this, that when God shows up, he's going to show out. When it's all over, he would have took you to a place that you didn't even imagine that you can be. So do not place, do not place God in a box. He is bigger than a box. It is said that, it's, that he is so awesome and so great and so magnificent that the only thing that could supposedly fit in the temple was his train. Not God himself, but his train. So know that the blessing that God has for you is beyond your imagination. Can't nobody get it. Can't nobody take it away. The only way can, you can lose it is if you walk away from it. So please don't have to start all over. I came, I, I, the scripture that I came across this morning was Philippians 3 and 14 where it says, press towards the mark. I need you all to continue to press. That means you got to do some work. If you ever lift weights, it's, it's not easy. If you want to get stronger, it's, you have to put more weight on it. And it's, and it's, it's strainful. It can be hurtful. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I called myself working out last week in the hotel. And I had worked out in a long time. And I'm still feeling it today. But I also know to get beyond the pain, I have to continue to work. To get beyond the pain, you have to continue to work. Whatever you're going through, continue to work. Whether it be on your job, whether it be in your relationship, continue to work. And you will root the fruits of your labor. So this morning, join me. Continue to work. Let's begin with the praise. When you praise God, if you're truly praising God, believe me, there is some freedom and relief in it. Even if you're not a believer. Even if you're wrong, if you ask Saul, he, he would ask David to play. And whatever he was going through for that moment, he would feel a sense of relief. So praise God this morning for yourself. Praise him for the person that you're praying for. Know that when it's all said and done, God has you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for the manifestation of your spirit this morning. We pray that you use the young man that is going to bring the word this morning. And Lord God, let us not sit here in judgment, trying to critique every small detail. 
and let him know that he doesn't have to worry about being critiqued because the only person that is in control is you. And it's you that has called them and not we ourselves. Prepare the ground, Lord God, that it be fertile ground, be it young people, be it older people, Lord, elderly people, Lord God. We all can learn something today. Keep us and guide us. If there's anyone that is struggling, Lord God, with addiction, depression, that's in pain, loneliness, I pray that you, Lord God, enter into their room, into their minds, into their hearts, into their spirits, and bring them joy at this very moment. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. May the praise team come. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Can as many as can, can we stand to our feet as we enter into God's presence? Amen. We ask God just to have his way. We thank God for Minister uh, Porter. Amen. And we thank God for what he is doing in this moment. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. And be glad in it. Hallelujah.
is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. That the we bless you lord god that we can sing to you lord god we can come into your gates you tell us to come boldly before the throne of grace lord god and we thank you lord god when we come into your presence we begin to realize how awesome you are lord god you are so awesome lord god your word says that you are to be had in reverence. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God. You said that when we bless your name that you will bless us from Zion, Lord God. We thank you today. Continue to have your way, our Lord. Hallelujah.
He's holy. 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 holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. holy. He's 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 for the rain that we have received. We praise you for the sunshine that you give us, Lord God. Oh, God, whatever you do, Lord God, let us just bask in your presence. We thank you, Father God, for the love that you have poured into our hearts. God, we thank you for the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, and peace. Oh, your gentleness, goodness, and faith, and, and long-suffering, Lord God, that patience, Lord God, that we need. We thank you, Lord God, for your fruit, Lord God. And with that fruit, Lord God, we thank you that we can share the same love with one another. Hallelujah. Can we just for a moment just walk around, shake a hand, hug a neck, amen. Welcome somebody into this house. God, we welcome your presence. We bless you for your presence, Lord God. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are omnipresent. Hallelujah. And because he is omnipresent, we thank God for our online family. Hallelujah. We thank you for our global faith family. That as, uh, hallelujah, we are here, you are there, that God is with you also. Hallelujah. He's not a respect of persons. Hallelujah. He loves us all the same. And we just want to welcome you today. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. Saints, love on one another. Greet one another. Hallelujah. That's it. Greet one another in the name of Jesus. Uh, we have an awesome young speaker today, amen, who's going to minister the word of truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yes, Jesus. That's it. Greet one another in the holy name of Jesus. Sickness and poverty must cease For the devil is defeated We are blessed Oh, we're blessed in the city We're blessed in the field We're blessed when we come and when we go We cast down every stronghold Sickness and poverty 
will take my seat For the devil is defeated We are blessed In the midnight hour Oh, God's gonna turn it around Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna work in your favor your favor Later, oh, later Later in the midnight hour God's gonna God's gonna turn it around It's gonna work It's, it's gonna, gonna work, work in your favor, favor. God's gonna turn it around And it's gonna work in your favor Wait and see, oh, oh, lady Oh, God's gonna, God's gonna turn it around And around, and around, and around, and around, and around Oh, we're blessed in the city We're blessed in the field We're blessed when we come and when we go For the devil is defeated, we are blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is so beautiful when we see the saints loving on one another, amen. amen. Jesus said, by this shall all men know, saved and unsaved, amen, that you are my disciples and that you, hallelujah, reveal, share this love with one another. As we prepare for the reading of the scriptures, amen, I'm mindful of what Paul said. He said, give attendance to the reading of the scriptures. Amen, somebody. I remember one time Paul was lonely. Paul said, hey, Timothy, bring the parchments with you. Amen. And bring me a coat also. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Broad, thanks for going to uh, <laughs> read our scriptures today. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to ask for those of you who can, if you could please stand as we prepare to read the word of the Lord. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. We're reading out of the NIV version. This will be a responsive reading, and it is up on the screen, if you can see, on my left and on my right. I will start with verse 10, and then you all will read verse 11, and we will alternate as such, and we'll read verse 17 together. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness altogether, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. with every fiber of my being I will praise your name oh Lord just have your way today we give you our hallelujahs be magnified Lord
this morning oh God we thank you as the dew of the morning fall in this place and we give your name all the praise Lord Jesus amen Amen. Uh, come on give the Lord another hand of praise this morning we have our very own pastor amen to come up hallelujah BRCC oh come on let's say that church B-R-C-C. Yes, we know Jesus is coming again. Let's give Jesus some praise in the house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He didn't uh, promise this to us, but through his grace, he got us here this morning. Uh, um, Sometimes within the clock woke us up, but no, but it was by the grace of God that we are here. Amen. You deserve it. Let's give Jesus some more praise, church. Hallelujah. Yes, I am uh, so happy to be here with you today, uh, to our Global Faith family, just wherever you are worshiping uh, from with us on Facebook. We say we are glad that you are here. I see a lot of people that I have met long time ago in my previous life all over America, some in Africa, yes, but we are glad that you chose to watch it with BRCC. Continue to share if you are on, you know, Facebook, share with your friends and families. Just quickly, I'm going to do this and uh, get out of the way, but um, God is a good God. God is good. God is good. Um, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, a few months ago, um, maybe six months, nine months, um, uh, God uh, brought the, the, the Bronex family back to us. Let me tell you this, though. Uh, God and I have a very special relationship. When I ask God for something, a lot of time he does. And I pray that God will send the broad next family to be our CC. You didn't know that. And God answered that prayer. And he's not done yet. Uh, this morning we have uh, playing on the piano our, um, Lazarus. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so um, God is good. God is good. God is good. Um, so through through um, the Broadnecks family, through Madison, uh, um, she told us about one of her friends at school and how God's working in her life and how through her life God's touching other people. And so we went to the graduation uh, honoring program, and uh, Jordan, I've met him before, and we talk and uh, ask him about his life in Jesus. He's excited, really, really excited. I said, well, I want you to come share some of that excitement with us at BRCC, and he said yes. So Madison will talk about him later, but just before I do that, I just want to um, recognize the presence of uh, um, uh, Miss Brenda Henderson Cook. That's... That's, that's, that's Jordan, our preacher's grandmother. Wave your hand, please. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. You know, uh, grandmothering can be a tough job. Uh, but in the midst of it, when you're grandmother, you know, uh, just praying to God, God can do wonderful things. So we're glad to have you at BRCC this morning. Uh, uh, Minister Mary Murphy uh, has with her uh, Jim and Teresa Atkinson this morning. Jim and Teresa Atkinson, yeah. We go a long way, go a long way. Um, Miss Atkinson knows Edie Gibson. Uh, she knows Mariana, you know, from Clay Chuffle and all that. We are glad that you are here with us today. And uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we say we are glad that you are here. And uh, we pray that whatever is said today, the Lord will use that to bless you through the song, through the singing. Uh, um, you are here for the first time. We say we are glad that you are here. And uh, so we pray that God will, will speak to all of us. Um, quickly before I leave, uh, we are planning our 2025 mission trip to Liberia, January 2nd through the 12th. Time is drawing closer. I think we have about five months, five months to go. So uh, if the Lord has laid on your heart to go, uh, we're having a meeting today, 4 o'clock via Zoom. Uh, the information is out there. Now, if you're here in this visible audience or you know Pastor Gibson, and for some reason at some time you say, Pastor Gibson, I want to go, but I mean, if the Lord is not calling you to go right now, don't feel embarrassed about it. Maybe just not the right time. Amen? All you can do is say, hey, God, just help me to support somebody who's making that trip, and it'll work out that way. So we're having that meeting today, and, um, and we continue to pray for our capital in, uh, improvement fund so that we can make our church a better place to serve our young people, to serve our community. And so go online and see all of what we are doing. But now I will get out of the way because I've asked Jordan to come and share with us. And so I will ask Madison brought next to come and tell us who Jordan is. Amen. Come on, Madison. My name is Madison, for those who don't know me. Um, I went to Clay, um, Clay Chapel High School with Jordan, which is where I met him. Um, I have watched Jordan grow into the young man of God he is today. He is 16 years old and is on fire for the Lord. His dedication to the Lord is unique. He spends hours of studying the word for himself, and then he teaches others as well. His teachings are powerful, uplifting, and convicting. So I hope you enjoy the message he'll bring forth to us today. Everybody, let's welcome Jordan McCoy. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. God is a good guy. Good. If it falls, just don't worry. Pick up the other one, okay? There's one right here. If it falls, just pick it up. Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is
is the day that God has made. Amen. I just want to say that it's a blessing to be here. God has done a lot in my life um, with family and, you know, me being in band and God has done a lot. Well, first off, I'm Madison R. I just want to say a few words. I am Jordan McCoy. I go to Clay Chapel High School. Um, I go to the God and Light Church. Um, I'm over there by the, you know, the racetrack and stuff like that. Under, I'm under the direction of Bishop Jim Lowe. Um, Y'all should um, check him out. Also, please, sir. He is actually the one who has actually encouraged me more and more to the word of God, like pushed me there. Um, I just want to say shout out to Bishop Jim Lowe, his daughter, A. Lowe, his son, Pastor Jim Lowe. Without them, I probably wouldn't have the courage to Madison and all of that. And I just want to say that the Lord knew I was going to be here because y'all sung my favorite song which is today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 118 verse 24. And today I'm going to talk about context versus conflict. Reading the word of God in context so that you don't end up having conflict with others. And I just want to say that when you read the word, Read it in a spiritual aspect so that you can receive the divine revelation that God is giving you through him. Because sometimes when we read the word of God in the physical intellect of man, we tend to not somewhat understand it because there are different translations to the Bible. But we're going to get to that today. Amen. And just as the song says, he is worthy, he is worthy, all praise to God for what he has done through me and my family, you know, and I just thank God for what he's done. So first off, um, I want to have us, okay, I'm going to go through this right now. Context, examining the surrounding text or circumstances that explain the meaning of something. That is what context is. Con- or now let's go to conflict. Conflict. A struggle or clash between opposing forces, battle, a state of opposition between ideas, interests, disagreements, controversy, and ETC, etc. Sometimes you're going to run across people who don't exactly believe or take interest of the things of God that you want them to. Because one thing I can say, God made us all differently. But with him making us differently, we all have different ideas. We live in different circumstances. We abide in different households. God has placed you where you are for a reason. Now, let's say you may be enduring conflict between that person, between that family member. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in the book of James, count it all joy when trials and tribulations come, because that brings on perseverance for the building of your faith so that you can persevere through the trials and conflict. What we just read a class of disagreements, circumstances, controversies that are coming your way. Because we know Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. To steal your lack of peace, to kill what God has created you to be, and to destroy your circumstances, to destroy you not coming to him. Because we know When we sit here and praise God, I want y'all to understand something. When you praise God, you are opening a spiritual atmosphere. The Bible says, there's this verse that I like, and it says, there are angels around the throne of God. And they say, all night and all day, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Basically, this is referencing in his kingdom, there is no end. He shall reign forever, no end. 
He came to this earth as a lamb, but he's coming back as a lion. Because the Bible says, watch out for the lowly of these. He came in a lowly state, in a stable, born of a virgin, born to a virgin. Watch out for those type of people that you least suspect because God can use any of you for his glorification. You are his vessel. Now let's go into context with some verses. If you do have your Bible, it turns to Romans 5, 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. And it says, God demonstrates his love for us. While yet we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now let's break it down. God demonstrates. That's a verb. Love is a noun, adjective, and verb. Let me tell you how it's a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing, right? When the Bible says God is love, then we just read about what a noun is, right? That was make love a noun. God tells you who he is. He said, I am that, and I will not change. So love is a noun, adjective. An adjective describes something. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. God is telling you how I loved you that I sent my only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life and will not perish. That is how love is an adjective, because God described how he loved you. Love is a verb, action, an action word, because then God put action into how he did it. He demonstrated. If I'm demonstrating something, church, what am I doing? I'm putting into action what I'm about to show you. I'm putting into action what I say. So therefore, that means God did not contradict himself when he said, I love you. Love is sacrificial. Love is sacrificial. Love is a lot of things, but we know that ultimately love is God. For the Bible says, it is written. He who does not love does not know God because God is what? Love. And the greatest commandment is love. Yes. Love God, you're what you're what? Heart, mind, and soul. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Are you doing that? He said, love covers for a multitude of sins. It did at the cross. So we hold on to all of this unforgiveness when he said, my son, my daughter, I can't forgive you if you don't love your neighbor, if you don't forgive them. Because how dare we hold a grudge against someone? And God has told us in his word to forgive and to love. Romans 5a says God demonstrated, that means he put action to how he showed he loved you. That shows you right there, love is sacrificial. If it wasn't sacrificial, God would have never did it. I want y'all to turn to another verse. We still in Romans, Romans 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. I'm gonna go to it real quick on my, on my Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. No, in all things, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Who is him? Jesus. Break it down in context. The Bible says to rightly divide the word of God. It says no in all things. That's talking about all circumstances, all things you abide in. No in all things. You may be going through a conflict. You may be saying, I can't pay that bill on time. 
You may be dealing with this person that's coming against you and striking you all the time. He said, no, in all circumstances, we are more than conquerors. That means you are more to your ability because you are a child of the king. Your words have power. When you say, Satan, I declare in the creed that I am healed, he sends his angels to minister unto you, and it is done. By you being a child of God, you have benefits of royalty. The angels in heaven, they answer to you because you are his child. But don't be like the disciples when the demon spoke to them and said, I know Jesus. I know Paul, but who are you? I don't know you. Who are you? Know who you are in Christ. My generation has a big big identity crisis right now. Saying men can be women, women can be men, God ordained you that, so that is what you will be. And all these different things happening, people sleeping with everybody, sex is spiritual and physical. Creates a bond between a husband and a wife. It should be not be outside of marriage, but I can't say the same for my generation. Because we do it a lot. But the, what the Lord says in his word is what it shall be. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I want you to know you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Because he said, I overcame the world. So if he can overcome the world as you being a son or daughter of the king, what makes you think you can't overcome the world? Satan comes against you for a reason. I believe God uses Satan for his glorification. Because even though we go through these things, no storm, no stillness, no cross, no glory. You need storms in your life for the building of your faith. That's what the Bible says, but he will help us to endure in temptation. God is not going to always hold your hand. Sometimes he's saying, my son, daughter, I'm wanting to see, do you trust me? Even when you feel like I'm not there. Because spiritually he is there, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Spiritually he's always there. God is everywhere. So when we go around these things and say, oh, I can't feel the Lord, his absence is not his sight. His silence is not his absence. Just because God may be absent, you may feel like he's absent, doesn't mean he's silent. Just because he's silent doesn't mean he's absent. Sometimes we may feel this way. I have a cross right here. This cross was a table of sacrifice. It represents the table of sacrifice. Who has heard of Moses' tabernacle? The tabernacle of Moses. The first thing the high priest came across was the brazen altar in which they sacrificed burnt offerings unto the Lord. Don't you know there came a high priest? Don't you know there came, there came a high priest who was the greatest sacrifice we ever had? The Bible calls him the Lamb of God. Not just a lamb. They sacrificed lots of lambs, lots of goats, lots of doves and all these things in the temple, but they said he was the lamb of God. Not just a lamb, but the lamb. This represents the sacrifice Jesus gave us. Now, the people think, oh, the cross was so heavy for him to bear. It was the sins of the world that was heavy. That cross is just a symbolization of what he had to carry, of what he had to go through. So when you look at the cross, remember, Jesus died. He was the sacrifice, the only perfect sacrifice, because all of us, it's not without sin. We all have sin and fall short. See, the Bible refers to sin as lawlessness, the breaking of God's law, word. And in another translation I heard, it means when you, the Bible says to fall short, that's a sin. God knew because we all sin that we won't amount to that perfect 
thing he wants us to be. Jesus, so God sent Jesus to show us what it looks like. Being, here's the thing. People say, oh, I'm just a good person. I'd rather be righteous. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as God is righteous. Jesus said to that person, why do you call me good? No one is good but the Father. So why do you call me that? They said, they said, oh, rabbi, teacher, master, how do we become great? If you wish to become great, church, serve others. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and gave his life as a ransom for many. You got to serve before you can lead. Look into the context of that. Serving comes before leadership. Why would God place you in a place of leadership and you can't serve him? You can't. The most, the most important thing God wants from you is time. He wants your time. He wants your dedication because time is a gift and it, it does not stop for nobody. When that person dies, time still keeps going. But we know God is outside of time. Outside of time. And also, I want to go into context about this. Death isn't something you should fear. By you being a child of God, you already conquered it. Death may come to you physically, but spiritually, it will not touch you. The Bible says, oh, death, where is your sting? You don't have no sting on me. Because when I die, the Bible says it is better to be absent from the body and in the presence of the Lord. So when you die, you're going to be with Jesus. The currency of heaven, how you get there, is faith and relationship. God wants relationship. He wants to know you intimately. The most intimate name of God, church, repeat this, Abba, Father. That's the most intimate name of God. The name that changes everything. Abba, Father. Jesus cried out to who? Abba, Father. He said, Abba, Father, if you are willing, take this cup of suffering with me. People say, look into context of this. People say Jesus wanted to die on the cross. They forget he was still a man. The Bible says he was so worried, had so much agony that he was sweating blood. That's a rare condition in our age. To the point of him sweating blood, rare condition. But he said, not my will, but your will be done. That means he sacrificed his intentions and he said, Father God, I'm going to walk into what you have purposed me to do. Sometimes y'all are putting the way you put it in front of yourself. You're making yourself a God when God is saying, I'm God of your life. I woke you up this morning. I didn't have to. We tend to forget how good God is. And we take his grace and mercy for granted. We tend to forget that. He's a merciful God. He's a forgiving God. But also he's just. That means he reigns forever in justice. He justifies all sin in righteousness. He is just. God is a lot of things. But one thing he will not do is change his word for you. Because it will forever stay the same. It will not change. Because if he says, I don't change, what makes you think his word don't change? Because it comes from his mouth. You can never go before the Lord too much. Never. If you, need, if you are in need, don't just go before the Lord because you need something. Sometimes prayer can just be praise. Sometimes prayer can just be worship. Intercede for others. When God sees you interceding for others, he sees the content of your heart. He sees my son, my daughter is selfless. She wants to put her needs before others. Sometimes, let me tell you something, worship is powerful because you may be worshiping, and because your worship has pleased the Lord, somebody in this crowd may be get, get healed. Because of your worship, because of what you are doing, the Bible says the praises go up and the blessings come down. So, praise is very important. 
Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. The Bible says he is a perfect peace. Not just any peace, perfect peace. Some of y'all are seeking temporary peace. When he says, I'm a perfect peace, Isaiah 26 verse 3. You can turn to it if you want to. It says, the steadfast mind you keep in perfect peace. Because he what? He trusts in you. He trusts in the Lord. She trusts in the Lord. He said, the steadfast mind. God is calling us to be steadfast and firm. I like this name of the church. Be ready for the coming of Christ. Will he find faith in the earth? Will he find a people that are prepared? They're saying, Lord, we are. We have headed towards the mark. We are pressed towards what you have called us to do. Go ahead, Lord. Come and get us. Some of these people, we see a lot of things. I know y'all saw the Olympics and what they did. The Bible says God is not mocked to wherever that man sows, he reaps. He is not mocked. But see, here's the thing. It also says, vengeance is mine, save the Lord. God can get them better than you ever will. Because he knows them. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So if he, it, it don't just say I knew of you, but I knew you. Knew you. Not of you. You. He already purposed what he wants you to do. Everybody in this room got a purpose. The question is, are you fulfilling it? We all have a purpose. We all have a calling, but many are called, but few are chosen. That means we all are called, but few choose to walk into it. That's the gift of free will God has given us. Many are called. That's why you got to be careful who you put in the pulpit. I may be in this pulpit, but God's going to judge every word that comes and proceeds out my mouth. Every word. Because I'm been placed with this position in front of his flock. So he's going to judge every word that comes from my mouth. But when I say, Lord, I step down, use me as a willing vessel. Use me to your glorification. Don't you know that the Lord is a consuming fire? That fire does not go out. He said he, fire purifies unrighteousness. Who remembers the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Or Abednego, either one. I'd rather be in the fire with the Lord than outside the furnace wanting the fire. So let me tell you something. They were in the fire, and the Bible says the king had bind their hands with a rope. You may be in the fire, but God may destroy what was tied to you. He may consume what you was dealing with, but you're still in the fire. Doesn't mean God going to stop praying for God, take me out the fire, take me out of it. Lord, put me in the fire. Because while I'm in there, all my infirmities, all my securities are consumed. They're consumed. Burned up. The Bible says, and what was tied to them was what? Consumed. It was consumed. God may not take you in. He didn't take them out the fire. He didn't save them from the fire. Because guess what? When you're in the fire, That's all right. Just keep on, keep on. All right. All right. But just because we're in the fire, the Bible says, the king said, did we not cast three men into the fire? I see a fourth one that looks like a god. Just because you're in the fire doesn't mean God's not going to be with you while you're in it. I'm going through cancer, diabetes, all these things are coming against me. Don't you know Jesus is bigger than cancer? He bigger than diabetes. He bigger than any insecurity you may have. Stop saying my anxiety. 
my depression. It comes against you. It doesn't belong to you. Your words have power. Stop claiming it. When you claim it, you're bringing it into your atmosphere, and it's going to rain there. But I say this day, Lord, you are my master. Cancer shall not master this body. Yes, it may come against me. And if it stays, I know there is a God who sits high, who looks down low, who sees my circumstances, who knows it. And, and everything I go through, he will be with me. Cancer may have my body, but it can't touch my soul. You can kill this body. Screw this body. But you can't touch my soul. Because all of our souls need an eternal destination. Your soul needs a resting place. Why do you think God ain't destroyed Satan yet? He got to rest somewhere. The Bible says Hades and death was casted into the lake of fire, which is the second death. That means you're going to die twice. You die physically, and you're going to die the next time. I don't want y'all to die twice. I don't want to die twice. Amen. Hell is not a place that you want to be. These people in that generation going around, flaw looking, ooh, it's going to be a party. All these, ooh, I'd rather go to, hell, go to hell. How are you comfortable with that? When the Bible says they'll be weeping, crying, yeah. gnashing of teeth, demons going to be all up in your face. Why would you want to be there? When the Bible says you can be in paradise with the Lord, that may, and, and that paradise, you, don't, you wouldn't want to leave, and you're not going to want to. Not going to want to. Storms don't say. They don't, storms do not stay. This too shall pass. And here's the thing about storms. They don't stay too long. They come for it. The Bible says, weeping may endure at night for a moment. But what comes in the morning? Joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the power God has given you, his joy. Not your joy. Happiness is temporary. But joy is eternal. The joy of the Lord is eternal. His joy, that's who he is. He's going to forever be joyful. Joy is a part of his being. He's not going to change. Did, we just talked about, does God change church? No, he does not. So joy is a part of who he is. Healing is his. When you say, Lord, I need some peace. If Jesus is the prince of peace, who do you think is the giver of peace? Who do you think is the father of peace if his son is the prince of peace? Peace, when you say, I want peace, when you say, Lord, I need peace. You're talking to the one who is peace. Lord, I need healing. You're talking to the one who is Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord is our healer. If only people would just, the Bible says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's go into context. It didn't just mean saved from your transgressions. It didn't just mean saved it doesn't just mean your soul being saved. It means you being saved from the infirmities of this world. All who call. That means you got to open your mouth. A closed mouth don't get fed, I was told. A closed mouth don't get fed. Open your mouth. The Bible says you have to intercede. Open your mouth. Some of y'all angels playing cards in heaven. Some of y'all angels just sitting there waiting for you to speak the word. And once you spoke it, God is like, go tend to my son. Go tend to my daughter. They waiting, they waiting. So just sitting there waiting. For you, like, open your mouth. You withholding your blessing. And don't get mad when people persecute you. People be doing that to Jesus. They did it to Jesus. He said, because you belong to me, because you are of me, because you abide in me, they will persecute you also. So when they persecuted Jesus, if they didn't like him, what makes you think they're going to like you? I'd rather be judged by God than by the world. Don't worry about what people say about you. 
I'd rather be judged by God, the ruler of the universe. We, they call him El Olam, which means the everlasting God. That means he is without end. I'd rather be judged by God than by the world. Stop worrying about what the world say about you. The world will say a lot of things, but guess what? I was once told this world going to hell in a handbasket. Some of these people going to hell on a train because they simply won't turn to God. The Bible says God wishes that none perish but all come to repentance. And I went across a video. This lady said, God don't love us, baby, if he didn't love me, why he put me here? If he didn't love me, why was I creating his image? He said, let us create man. Us. Y'all see the secrets of the Bible? Us. That means there is two other people to the being of God. The Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He said, let us create man in our own image. He told Isaiah, we need to be more like Isaiah. He told Isaiah, whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here I am. Send me, Lord. If you call yourself a servant, a servant obeys his master. A servant obeys his master. But Jesus came to serve. He was a servant. He, he's not just the master. Yes, he is Lord, but he's also a servant. While he was on this earth, he was a servant. He served our every need. We needed a savior. And what he did, he gave it up. Gave up himself. Gave up himself for us. We needed a savior. We needed somebody that was going to cover our sins because the Bible says without blood there is no remission. That means God looks at blood as holy. Why do you think God uses blood? Because blood is life. He said, he told Cain, your brother's blood cries out to me. How could blood cry if he didn't have a voice? Blood, the blood was crying out to the one who sent it. Blood was crying out to the one who created it. Do you know your creator? We need to cry out to the Lord. The Bible says, and the righteous cry out, and he hears them. Y'all be trying to worry about all these things these wicked people doing. The Bible says God laughs at the wicked. Why do you think we got a sense of humor? We got it from our Father. He laughs at the wicked because he knows their day is coming. I don't want to be in those type of people. That he going to sit there... Because here's, here's how God works. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. I was once told and learned. He is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself upon you. He don't come against you in the wrong way. He going to simply, when you say, God, let me do it my way. Okay, my son. He going to step clearly out the way. And he going to let you do it. But see, here's the thing. God already knows the downfall. He already knows the outcome. So when you say, Lord, let me do it my way, he's going to step surely out the way. Because then he, if he didn't, that would contradict what he gave you, free will. So he's going to step surely out the way. And guess what? As soon as he step out the way, disaster comes. Because without Jesus, what are we? Nothing. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. My father prunes the branches that bear fruit so they can bear more. He prunes them. That means he, you ever heard of someone that trims a bush so it can grow more leaves? That can bear more. That's what God does. The Bible says we will know them by their fruits. Don't let the works that you do in God be vain. Do it to the good purpose so that you can get to the mark, so that you can finish this race. Stop saying, they tell us, oh, I, Lord, you are my victory. He is our victory. Jehovah Nisi, our banner. We fight from victory, not for it. You already have it. From it, not for it. Now, we're, now is a context with that also. Well, hold up, Jordan. I got this trial and stuff. Yes, but if you declare in that trial that you got victory, what's going to happen? You're going to have some victory. Because Jesus is our what? Our victory. 
you're going to have some victory. God ain't going to leave you in the dust. What type of God is that? What type of father leaves his son in the wilderness to be consumed by wolves? That's not what he's going to do. The Israelites were once enslaved to a mighty nation. They were oppressed. They had a burden. They were kept in hardship, unjust exercise. Don't let the things of this world enslave you. The Bible said, Jesus said, he who sins is a slave to it. Don't be a slave to sin, but be a slave to righteousness. Pursue righteousness. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Don't just listen. It's a difference between listening and hearing. I learned. I can listen when I actually hear the context of what is someone has told me. Listen and hear. There's a difference between the word knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge. Take the letter L after the word and you have no an edge. Know the word of God and use it as a two-edged sword. Because that is what it is. Wisdom is from God. The Bible calls him El Dia. Y'all repeat that. El Dia. El Dia, which means the God of knowledge. You are dust, you are dirt, we are flesh. We know nothing. When people say, oh, that's just my wisdom and knowledge. That's his wisdom and knowledge. I'm the vessel. You must forgot your place. We are the vessels. You are his child. You are his son. You are his daughter. We are the vessels for his glorification. Don't forget your place. Because that's what Satan did. Satan forgot his place. And what happened to him? God kicked him right out. You ain't going to come into my house and tell me what I'm going to do. Why would God, why would I let you to my house and I don't know you? Why would I, why would God, that's the same with God. Why would he let us into his kingdom and we don't know him? You may got some bills that need to be paid. You may got some Bills, 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 bills. Always bills with his government. But if God says he's Jehovah Jireh, means our provider, if he says I'm Jireh, that means he didn't just mean, I'm just, yes, I'm your provider. He didn't just mean it in that context. He meant it in a context that says I'm your soul provider. That means I provide your every need. Who do you think speaks to the atmosphere for you to be woken up the next morning? Do you really understand the capacity of the human body? The brain is the head of the body. The heart pumps blood to, the brain, it's funny. The brain tells the heart to pump blood. But without the blood, the, with, without the blood, the brain can function. Ain't that something? Look how God operates. Blood, you need blood to survive. People say, oh, I want to give blood. Giving blood is great. But there was someone's blood who had already been shed for you. Holy blood. Clean blood. His blood was shed for us, for everyone in the world. Heaven is the place that God has promised to all his children. Heaven is a promise. The question is, will we enter it? It's a promise. It's a place of paradise. In heaven, you ain't going to be worried about what you had going on on earth. The Bible says he makes all things new. All things have what passed away. When you enter those gates... When you enter those pearl gates, all those things you had on earth going to pass away because you're in a place of paradise. There's no worry in heaven. There's no doubt in heaven. There's no anxiety. Those things do not exist in the presence of a holy God. They said, but God, my mama down there is suffering on earth. But God, my daddy down there is suffering on earth. You in the kingdom of God. You in the kingdom, a place of paradise. If it's a place of paradise, it means it's a place of rest. That's your place of rest, heaven. And also, earth ain't your home. It's not. Earth is not your home. It's your place of assignment. 
We all have, remember I said we all got a purpose. We all have an assignment. Earth is your place of assignment. It's not your home. Heaven is your home. Because if God said before I knew you, before you were born in the room, I knew you. If he said that, that means you were having conversations before you were even born with God Almighty in heaven. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. If I know you, that means I got to talk to you, right? If I know you, that means we got to have conversations, right? If I know Miss Broad next, that means we got to have conversations, right? That means when I say I know you, if I told her, if I say to one of y'all, I know Miss Broad next, I know Michael, I know my grandmother, that means we have to have conversations. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That means you were having conversations before you were even born with God Almighty. It's so, it's, it's amazing. Romans 12, verse 2. Stop dwelling on sin. Stop building monuments on sin. But ask the Lord to have a desire to pursue and abide in righteousness. Because when you abide in righteousness, you shall be declared righteous. The Bible says in Romans 2, verse 13, he who obeys the laws of the Lord, who abides in righteousness, shall be declared righteous. You could die tomorrow. We, I could die next week, next month, next year. I don't know. God forbid. I still want to live my life. He got some blessings for me. But you don't know that appointed time. Death is not a final state, but it's a, it's a transitional state. You are transitioning into eternity. But do you want to transition into paradise or eternal damnation? Let's transition. Let us, when we come across the day, I would, I would want for you to transition into paradise with the Lord. We're tired of earth. We're tired of these sufferings. This, we tied all these things we have to go through. The Bible says, where your heart is, where your heart is, where is your heart? God wants your heart. God knows your heart. He wants it. Give your heart to God. God, David asked God, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew the right spirit within me. God wants your heart. He wants everything. That's what it means to surrender. Give him everything. It doesn't matter how old you are. Remember I said, watch out for the lowly of those. For the least of these. You may think you are least, but God says you are great. I created you for great things. Don't let man tell you that you will never do what God has purposed for you to do. But you can let them if you listen to them. Remember what I said about listening and hearing. The Bible says to guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. That means who is abiding on the throne of your heart? Is it God or is it Satan? Who abides there? Is it the King of Kings? The Lord of Lords? You can say, oh, I believe in Jesus, but the demons believe and still tremble at the same name. So, truly, let us have an intimate relationship with God. The blood of Jesus. The blood. The blood. The blood, you've been set free. The Bible says those who are, who are in, that means covered by the blood, you abide in him. Those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. You are not condemned because you are in the one who is righteous. Jesus is still alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father. Sits at the right hand, waiting for you to invite him in. Because our atmosphere, a life with God, is a life with purpose. Because don't live your life in vain to what the world says. This world are doing, the Bible says, he who is a friend of the world is an enemy to God. 
You have enmity with him. Be not of the world. Do not be conformed. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but by the power of renewing of your mind, by the renewal of your mind, so that you can test the will of God. What I like about, um, after I'm done, y'all, with um, communion, my church, we call it consecration and communion. To consecrate is to dedicate your body to the service of the Lord. To set something apart as holy. You got to judge yourself before you partake of his body, of his blood. That communion is so important. You are about to partake of the body of Christ. So when you partake of his body, what are you believing him for? What are you asking him for? When you partake of the body of Christ, believe in what he said he will do for you and through you. Communion is so important. So before I close out, I just want to pray. I just ask the church, can y'all bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be here, oh God. For taking us safely over the highways and byways for leading us to the place where we can worship you. We thank you, O oh God. As we partake of communion, help us to know, O oh God, that this is your body that was pierced and striped for us. You said, do this in remembrance of me. This is your blood that was poured out for us. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, I bless, I, I place a blessing over the community. Lord, I ask that you be with them as they leave. Don't leave the presence of God. Surround them in your peace. Surround them in your healings. Somebody in here needs liberty. Somebody needs freedom in here. I do not know it. Somebody needs freedom. Somebody needs peace. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs a peace of mind. Somebody needs to be liberated from those bills they handle. Somebody needs peace from whatever family, whatever family center situation they're going through. Somebody needs peace. Somebody needs liberty. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty. There is freedom. God is willing to set you free today. If you got to get up and come to the altar, if you got to get up, you got to stand up, come up. This is your blessing. God is about to set you free. Open your mouth so that God can give you what he can on what he knows he can because he is God. Lord, I ask that you be with them. Set somebody free today. For that is a eternal and that is true freedom. In the name of Jesus. BRCC, may your strength equal your days. And may you continue to walk with the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Shalom. And that is my message. another hand um, hand, um, hand clap that was an exceptional word reminding us of who God is hallelujah hallelujah amen amen I want to reiterate what he said if you are in need this morning if there is anything you stand in need of and you want to receive prayer please do come down to the altar if you don't know Jesus this morning as your Lord and Savior please come to the altar if you don't want to come to the altar you can speak with ministers as Pastor Gibson here and other ministers in the sanctuary that you can talk to but we thank God for that word on this morning and now it's time for our communion. And so I'm going to ask Minister Cyrus, Reverend Gibson. Get Minister Karen.
How many of you know God is a good, good father? chapter 11 verse 23 says for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me says in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me let's drink Precious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word this morning. And God, we thank you, Lord, for communion, Father. God, it's a sacred time, Lord, and it's not, we don't take it lightly. Father, I thank you for all that have received, Lord God, of your salvation. God, by eating the bread and drinking of this cup, Lord, we pray that you have your way in our lives each and every day. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. You're a good, good father. We're going to get ready to play our announcements. And I'm going to ask that you take a look at the screen, I believe. Friends, this is Minister Victoria Knight coming to you with our WBRCC weekly news updates. We are so glad that you are able to join us. And if you are a visitor, please connect with us by scanning the QR code from your seat or on the screen so that we can get to know you. There are many ways that you can partner with us in ministry by way of giving. You can give on our website at brccbham.org, scan the QR code at your seat right in front of you, give by cash or check, or you can text BRC to 73256. For assistance, please call the office at 205-401-0539. We recently updated our time of service to 10 a.m. to better serve you and our community around us. 
We also have Children's Church at 10 a.m. and Youth Group at 10 a.m. Please join us for a time of information, inspiration, in hopes of transformation. Our young adult small group meets every fourth Sunday at 2.30 p.m. If you are between the ages of 18 and 30 and you're looking for community, please contact Reverend Tracy Stone at brccbirmingham at gmail.com. If you'd like to make an impact for the kingdom globally, please join our pastor, Pastor Eddie Gibson, January the 2nd through the 12th of 2025 as he sojourns to Liberia, Africa. For more details or to sign up, visit our website at brccbham.org. Also, there will be an interest meeting today at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please plan to attend for more information. Our Recharge Weekly Bible Study meets every Wednesday. Doors open at 6.30 p.m., service starts at 6.45, and we conclude at 7.30 p.m. Come out and join us as we continue our study on the insanity of God. Our monthly fast begins on today and concludes next Sunday, August the 4th. Join us this Monday through Friday for prayer at 6 a.m. until 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time via Zoom. Jesus says that his house shall be called a house of prayer. That's why here at BRCC, we seek to be a house of prayer before anything else. Every first and third Friday, we get together and we boldly make our requests known before God. Saints, it's time that we prioritize prayer. We're praying for one another, our children, our city, our nation, and Christians all around the globe. Join Reverend Karen Lacey in the prayer Zoom room every first and third Friday. If you are passionate about teaching young children about Jesus and sharing the gospel with them, the Birmingham Metro Baptist Association will be hosting a training for volunteers for their fall discovery clubs, where they take free after school Bible clubs to children on public school campuses. The training will be held this Wednesday, July the 31st from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. For more information, contact Ms. Carol Gargas at 205-941-9856. Also, Pillar of Hope Church, located at 520 5th Street, Birmingham, Alabama, 35217, will be hosting classes this fall on personal evangelism and effective disciple making. Classes are $50 each and there will be a Zoom option available. If you are interested in signing up, email Deidre Phillips at dgreen at samford.edu or call 205-726-4055. Congratulations is in order for BRCC's own Miss Tamia Lester and Mr. Brandon Kenner on their upcoming wedding. The wedding will be held here at Brewster Road Community Church on October the 12th at 1 o'clock p.m. Please plan to come out and celebrate this sweet and sacred moment with the bride and groom. Happy birthday to all of our July birthdays and may the Lord bless you with many more. Take a look at all of the July birthdays and let's give them a round of applause. And happy anniversary to those of you who are celebrating your anniversaries this month. This concludes our weekly announcements. Remember to connect with us here at BRCC, a place where you matter. 
I am Minister Victoria Knight, your WBRCC news anchor, and I'd be remiss if I didn't make this final important announcement. Be ready for the coming of Christ. Amen. Thank you, anchor woman, Minister Victoria. Thank you for those announcements. You all, we're coming to the close of our service on this morning. You all, let's give Minister Jordan another hand. He did an awesome job. I, I know I was going back and forth, but he did a wonderful job in presenting the word. And I want to just kind of admonish you. You know, a lot of times we do give speaker honor rings, but we want to give we want to give Jordan a love gift this morning. So as you prepare to give your offering, your tithes and your offering to the Lord, if you can add a little extra and just let us know that this is for the minister of the hour so that we can bless him um, with more than just what is put aside by the church. So if you would do that this morning, we greatly appreciate it. And, oh yeah, and there's a basket in the back um, where you with offering envelopes there that you can place your offerings in. All right, so if that's it, Pastor, do you have anything? All right, you all please stand to your feet. We are going to dismiss. How many of you were blessed this morning? The praise and worship the word. Yes, Pastor has. Yes, I must acknowledge you all. We have in our midst today someone that I think everyone is familiar with. But if you don't know her, I am going to introduce to some and present to others the daughter of our pastor and first lady who is back from dental school. Ms.